Hello, everybody. Welcome back to HTC Invitational Final. Oh, man, that was a wild ride. Forsen versus Tides of Time. Our production manager disappeared for just a moment, but he is alive. He did not pass away, and he did not pass out. He actually had a break-in, and he had to stop it, just defeat the burglar. But now he's back, and we are back. Me, Nimsh, and Monk. Monk, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back, and we're just just about ready to see our finals of the tournament. It's going to be Forsen Boys and uh, Cloud9's very own Tides of Time. Certainly an exciting match between um, possibly the most aggro decks that you can find in the metagame against the most creative decks that you can find in the metagame. Oh yeah, Tides Boys versus Forsen Boys. And uh, Forsen is running a Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, and a Zeman Lock, where Tides is running some Volcanic Drakes. What's up with his decks? Yeah, just uh, I guess the the card of the day for Tides of Time is Volcanic Drakes. He's brought him in two of his decks, and he's even brought Murloc Warlock as his third deck. Just I'm not sure if Tides is uh, trying to be as creative as possible, but if there were a vote for that, he'd certainly get my vote. All right, and we want to remind you guys that those those guys. Tides boys, Force and boys. They went through all those other players. We had 16 players invited to this tournament. The $5,000 prize pool. The winner is taking $2,500. Uh, all of the matches were best of fives. We had some cool stories. We had HTC sponsored players versus the not HTC sponsored players. And um, some crazy decks, crazy ideas, and uh, fun stuff. A lot of top decks. Um, a lot of really streamlined decks as well. Uh, a lot of fun during two days. And I'm pretty sad that we are going to finish after this last match the final, but pretty excited to, to cast it for you here with Monk. All right, so Monk, predictions with those lineups, the lineups that we know and love from both of those players. Who is, uh, who is uh, having an edge coming into that final? Um, I think overall, I kind of have to give the edge to Tides of Time. It's certainly who I'm cheering for, not because of, I like the player, perhaps, but just more that he's just bringing such awesome decks. It's just really awesome to see a player who's not cookie-cuttering all the time, not net decking, just bringing his own style, his own flavor into tournaments. All right. So um, I want Tides to win as well, uh, not only because of Cloud9, but because of the Dragons and uh, the Murlocs. But then Forsen is bringing, you know, people's decks. Uh, those are like decks that people play on ladder all the time. A very streamlined, good decks. Uh, Mech Mage, Mech Shaman. Um, I face those a lot. Like, people love those decks. And Forsen is playing excellent. Uh, he's showing excellency with those. So if you want to improve your Mech Mage or Mech Shaman play, definitely watch Forsen running those. And that Demon Lock, uh, called Demon Lock, so it's kind of like... I'm calling it Demon Lock because it's more like a zoo with demons, right? Like, um, not traditional... A demon lock going more into, or is it traditional demon lock? What is this deck really? Uh, well, it's kind of like a traditional zoo, but kind of morphed into this uh, with void callers with uh, the Melganis. Just a lot of value, I guess. Just out tempoing your opponent with just huge plays like uh, void uh, with like the Nubian egg into void caller or into void terror, for example. Uh, the void caller into void terror. Plus summoning a Malganus on the same turn. Just things that your opponent just can't deal with on a certain turn. All right, so we are here at game number one versus Tides of Finals versus Final Sen. Is this For Forsen's first final? Um, yeah, I believe it is. He, I believe he got to the semifinals of the Via Game House Cup number one. But uh, ever since then, he hasn't really, uh, hasn't really hit the mark. And he has to face the Murlocs. So, Mech Shaman versus Murlocs. Let's evaluate the hands first. Um, yeah, it's really hard to tell from both players, but I guess the key card um, is going to be that Power Mace from both players. Oh, wow, it's... look at that. He is aiming for double knife and he hits Oh, my it. God. So magic. Force Never is lucky. just clapping. Never lucky, baby rage. You know, Ties of Time actually has gotten really bad luck with uh, knife juggle hits in previous games against Stripe Pro, for instance. But I guess, like, RNG rewards him this time, at least. Look at that cold light seer, just off the top. He's actually going for the top here. Yeah, I think the, the problem with the cold light seer is that it's there's still too many murlocs on the board that um, the power mace would be too good against. So he's just trying to set up more value. Um, for example, if Forsen decides to clear one of the uh, a non-murloc here, then he can then Tides of Time can potentially buff up to three Murlocs in the next turn. 
Yeah, that's true. Also, uh, running the tight hunter with uh, wait, tight caller with the seer is actually an amazing fader. A five six spider tank. What is tides of uh, of Murlocs going to do here? You can dark bomb and then you can trade your minions into it, but it's not that great. If you defender Argus, hmm. Everything just feels so weak uh, at the moment. Maybe playing both Murlocs and hoping to overwhelm your opponent. Uh, the problem with Shaman is that it doesn't have too much spot removal. I mean, if you have the rock, if you use Rock Biters for removal, then uh, you're not going to get good value from. Um, you're, you're not going to be able to de use those Rock Biters uh, to combo with Doom Hammers, for instance, to go to your opponent's face. Yeah, that's certainly true. But maybe just Defender of Argus and going for face. Uh, Stack Forsen is already at 19, and. Um... Did he use an Ultron early? There was an Ultron, right? Or was there? Um, no, that was a a Whirling Zapomatic, I believe. That All right, was what right. Turns. Okay, yeah. so Dice has a lot of bursts. Like he has the Dark Bomb. Wow, going for the full board clear. And hoping Almost. that there is no mech as a follow up. There are two mechs. Two mechs and a Doom Hammer. I think uh, either would be a, a. Any of the plays available to Forsen would be pretty good. Um, he certainly has board control this turn, but he'll have to transfer that into. Um, into like he has just had to keep this board control because it is going to be the Warlock that has card advantage at this point. And he's going to keep up his card advantage because of his hero power. Meanwhile, Forsen has to get value um, off of his board with the Flame Tongue Totem and the Doom Hammer. And even a Power Mace is drawn. Um, yeah, any of these options are, would be pretty good. Weapons are really good in minion trading, and um, but then again, like if you attack with a weapon, you're taking damage. And Tides of Time has a lot of burst in his deck. Right now, we can see Reader. There's still double power overwhelming Soul Fires. Yeah, this uh, this is pretty amazing. The I like playing the Power Mace first here because. Um, if you play the Power Mace and then you play the Doom Hammer on the very next turn, you actually get Wind Fury. Um, so you can attack with the Power Mace once, and then you can attack with the first charge of the Doom Hammer um, on the same turn for a second time. Alright, so here, pretty much terrible turn. Just, uh, is he forced to play Flame Him and pass? Maybe just to, for the better mana situation, just go with the Defender of Argus. Yeah, this is kind of the issue with this kind of bursty deck. It's that if you lose board control ever, then you're probably going to have a very hard time getting it back because so many of your cards are situational or they're very bursty. Oh man, playing Defender of Argus, a vanilla Defender of Argus, not buffing anything on turn 6. It, it feels so bad. It feels so bad actually that Ties of Time is going to concede game number 1. So Forsen getting a lead with his Mac Shaman. Versus the Murlocs. He burned the fish. He yeah, pummeled the fish with those weapons. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just that key card of the Power Mace was exactly what he needed. Getting so many good trades. Um, getting so much good value off of that one card. Not only did he kill off two minions. Uh, two very valuable minions. In fact, most of them were Murlocs from, uh, from time to time. But also, he was able to buff his Spider Tank. So that Spider Tank actually tanked even more damage. So almost that was... Uh, that. Power base plus the spider tank was kind of like a, a two for four, essentially. Yeah, but then again, there was not really a great option to go for face. Like, he could play Defender of Argus, uh, buff Priestess, and uh, buff the Murloc, go for face there, and try maybe to top deck some burst, but he didn't get that. Like, he got the, the Flame Imp, he got uh, some other cards which were, were not really helpful. So, uh, but we mentioned that before as well. Like, this Murloc deck, it needs to work once. Um, it can snowball, it is one of the most snowbally decks. So if it snowballs versus Mech Mage, or if it snowballs versus the the Demon Lock that Forsen has, it's going to, to lock itself into winning. But right now, Forsen is winning 1-0, and he just needs two more two more wins with his um, kind of aggro. Like, I wouldn't say the Demon Lock is an aggro deck. What, what kind of deck is this? Is it like mid-range with, with spells? Well, it's kind of like a board control deck, right? Um, back when Zoo was really popular, um, a lot of players called it an aggro deck, but in essence, it actually just tried to get board control as much as possible. Um, it's In a sense, it's almost like a Shaman deck because a Shaman and Paladin, of course, they're all decks that strive for board control. 
And with board control, they can do a lot more things like with abusive sergeants, with um, with void terrors, so many options there. Is there any deck you can see right now that will never never win uh, from both of the slayers? Well, first of all, Nimsh, this is Hearthstone, so any deck has a possibility of winning, right? But I think overall, the matchups are fairly even all around. We have to keep in account, too, that Tides of Time is being su bringing such weird decks that it's really hard to judge the matchups of any of the decks. I mean, adding in two Revenge into your Control Warrior deck, how much does that change your various matchups? Who knows? Only Tides of Time, I believe. Yeah, he was testing and playing the matchup a lot, so... Uh... Uh, it, it seems like neither of players are targeting any specific matchups. Well, Forsen was targeting Druid, but there's no Druid from Tides of Time. So uh, most of these decks have, have a fair chance versus Forsen decks as well. And um, it will end up like seeing, we will end up seeing like what's going to happen with regards to the cards and decisions that players do. But it seems like there is nothing really outshining the 50 50 or maybe like 55 45 percentage in the matchups. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's just so many unknown factors, especially from Tides of Time's uh, side. Also, um, a lot of these decks are fairly draw dependent as well, especially that Murloc Warlock. As you mentioned, like that deck can just get a lot of wins, but it can also very easily go 0-3. And even though that deck got Tides of Time this far into the tournament, it can easily fail him at this moment. Do you think there is any... Um... All right, game two is actually starting. I wanted to ask if Forsen is stressed because it's his first final and Tides of Time was playing in the final before. But let's just focus on the hands here. Murlocs again versus that Demon Warlock, Zeman Lock, Zoo, Zeman, Demon, some eggs. Yeah. The eggs are going to be very valuable here because they're going to get a lot of value with the, the addition of the Power of Overwhelmings. If they're not going to have like very efficient trades against the Murlocs, but if, when you're using like an egg to deal four damage to your opponent's minions, and then summon a four-four, that's overall pretty good value. Forsen is going to start with. Um, he's thinking about knife juggler, but knife juggler will be easily countered if there's any murloc. Um, this tight collar can can attack into it. It's not much that Tides of Time can do here. It's only the question: what if you go for the bluegill uh, to deal four damage now, or do you go for juggler? Seeing that egg, you might be um, thinking, hey, there is a power overwhelming. This Naruban egg is going to hatch next turn. I wonder. Yeah, exactly. So um, if you do suspect a power overwhelming, or rather, if you suspect an abuse of sergeant and not a power overwhelming, then there's a, an option, for example, not to play like a Murloc or a Knife Juggler here, which is exactly what he does. He's playing um, around the, the abusive sergeant, but unfortunately, for, that's not the buff that Forsen has. He has the power of overwhelming, which perfectly counters this Murloc. Not only and that, yeah. Walker on top of it. Exactly. It's exactly right, what so... we were talking about. Just uh, this deck, we've seen Tides of Time winning so many games with the Murloc Warlock, but um, it's kind of fizzling out at this moment. Yeah, somehow it doesn't work. Uh, right now, it's not really easy to do anything on this turn. Like, you want to play... What can you even do? Like, can't play two minions. But using Power of Warming to kill up with Walker doesn't seem right, especially with that 4-4 four -four just sitting behind it and waiting to attack you next turn. Just uh, maybe playing the worst minion you have and, and hoping for the next turn to, to do something. Like, if he plays Palo Stomper and passes, this is at least contesting... What is it? What is it actually contesting? Like, I guess that one-one Voidwalker. Um, yeah, he's just hoping that his opponent will trade his Nubian egg or Nubian spider into the puddle stomper, so it kind of delays. Um, it it kind of gives him good knife juggles as well, or at least the potential for good knife juggles. If he hits the Voidwalker. Oh my God. Hits. Well. All right. That's this, a fast concede from Tides of Time, missing this, the knife. This might be the fastest finals we've ever seen. I mean, Firebat versus Tansifka at Dreamhack Bucharest uh, a few weeks ago was pretty quick, especially with the turn three uh, finish from Firebat. But, I mean, this could be even quicker, just Tides of Time conceding three times a row in the first three or four turns. That's exactly what we had predicted, that this Murloc Warlock might just go 0-3. Monk, it seems like a nightmare. It's like if you would tell Tides of Time, let's say, two months ago, hey Tides, you're going to be in the final 
versus Forsen. Tides of Time will be like, wait, versus Forsen? What? And then you will tell him, but you will have a, an, an outdated Murloc deck to win versus him. It seems like a nightmare you wake up from, right? Yeah, it's like, but it's, why am I running this deck in the final of HTC Invitational? I mean, it's it's certainly a deck that uh, I don't think Tide to Time would be too surprised because he is kind of like the mad genius, the the most creative player that we know. Ever since the um, like in in late 2014 or in the middle of 2014, he brought mind control tech in Paladin. He brought Baron Geddon in Paladin, cards that we would never think of running in Paladin, and he won tournaments with those cards. All right, so game number three, Tides of Time versus Forsen. Dad is bringing good streamlined decks, just going for that final for the win, getting his first trophy, and uh, Tides of Time just putting his faith in the fish. Yeah, I certainly hope that Tides will at least be able to take one game here, and um, that certainly seems likely, even though the Blast Mage is kind of the perfect counter against this kind of Murloc deck. Uh, we don't see any mechs yet in Forsen's hand. Plus, like, yeah, he can't activate this Cogmaster, plus this Mad Scientist. Um, even if it gets a Mirror Entity on the field, it can get very easily countered by, like, a Young Priestess, even, for example. Yeah, so we're pretty unlucky for Forsen not having the mech. You can see on Forsen's face that he's saying, yeah, never lucky, Baby Rage. But he is actually leading 2-0 versus Tides, and he's in a very good spot to take um, the the trophy. So you can even yeah you can even consider pinging here, because if you just play the mad scientist, eventually you'll y you want to ping on the on turn three, but if you draw a mech on turn three, you'll want to play the mech as well. So you're gonna have an awkward turn three as well. Yeah, and also just getting mirror entity this early when your opponent has a lot of small minions, it's not doing much. Well, fortunately for um, for Forsen, there's no really good play from time to time this turn, so he has to at least tap, which gives him, um, which gives Forsen like kind of a breather. Yeah, Tides of Time has a lot of bursts in his hand, but no Murlocs, and he needs Murlocs to succeed. So another Voidwalker. Just seeing what he's going to get. Vitality told him he will be able to use the Morocco. It's not. A <laughs> yeah, Forsen's laughing. This is not the minion I was looking for. Oh, and he picks up the Flame Imp. Nice. So now it's uh, on Forsen's... Uh, is Forsen going to concede fast here? What do you think? Those aggro matches, man. Yeah, Side exactly. Excited before anything happens. I think it still might be a while. I mean, there hasn't been any huge Murloc turns yet. And Forsen always has the Goblin Blast Mage, but this Goblin Blast Mage, Blast Mage will have to be working overtime if he ever wants to get back into this game. That's absolutely true, and there is this Anoyatron, so maybe the work will pay off. Imagine two hits into the Knife Juggler and two hits into the Flame Imp. From the Blast Mage. Can force and pull it off. I don't quite see any um, really good play besides that. You can, well, you can Frostbolt, like what he's going to do is Frostbolt, Anoyatron, and um, Mad Scientist. But the problem with that play is that he has to get really lucky that he needs to draw another mech in a, in a later turn. So yeah. he's he's like going for this like kind of awkward play um, in which he has to force himself to draw a mech on turn 7. So here being Tides of Time, you want to develop the Murloc, you want to um, play Defender Varius. You go through a Nyotron. The, the question is, what do you taunt? Do you taunt up Voidwalker and a Flame Imp? And then you attack, let's say, uh, Anoyatron with the Voidwalker with um, one of the Murlocs. And just go for face. You can also just um, play the Murloc. You can trade Flame Imp into Lothab if you want to go into board control, but with so much burst in hand. Oh, wow. That's actually amazing. So you can... With this, you can actually trade with Lotha because this is such an amazing board that you want to protect your Molochs. Wow, these uh, three, four, and two, four Burlocks. That's going to be quite out of the range for Forsen to deal with Goblin Blast Mage. And even though he draws it back, it might just be too late. Yeah, he needs to hit 
Void Walker. Like the problem is right now, uh, for the, the Forsen's problem is like Tides of Time has three cards. He's going to draw two. If he gets a single Murloc or, or two of them, it's going to buff those um, Tide Colors. They're they're really dangerous. Dangerous enough to fireball them. Exactly. Like back in the day when Murlocs were like really powerful. And uh, Murlocs actually had both the rank number one legend on EU and NA. Um, it was kind of like common knowledge that you have to get rid of the Murlocs as early as possible, or they just snowball way too hard. Especially the, the Tide Murloc Hunter. Tide Caller. I think th this is the Tide Caller, and uh, the one in hand is Tide Hunter. Exactly. That's confusing. Yeah. Yeah, I looked it up uh, right after Tides of Times' first match. I'm like, okay, in order to brush up for this cast, I actually have to learn <laughs> all the names of the Murlocs. Yep, that's true. They are tricky. And uh, with Defender Vargas... Oh, he's going for just the damage increase here. I think it's it's fine because the... Um, like, you, like, this Tinker Town Technician isn't threatening at all. It's not a mech even. Yeah. Alright, Piloted Shredder. And a Blast Mage or Mech Warper Blast Mage Pain. That Blast Mage might decide this game right now, right here. That's uh, decent. Oh, a War Leader. That was even more than decent. But uh, is it enough? This is 7 plus 2 plus 3, actually. That's 10. Plus, uh, he's 1 damage off. Wow. Oh, wait. No, he's buffing his own Murlocs with the <laughs> second War Leader. What is happening? That, that's hilarious here. That's actually hilarious. Using Murdy against Forsen with the Murloc deck. Wow. 15 attack on a single Murloc. Monk. That was just crazy. It was big. It was bigger than a Fell Reaver. It was bigger than Deathwing. Yeah, pretty amazing here. Yeah. It's like Godzilla. At least tied to time, he won a match with the Murloc Warlock, but now he has to win matches with, um, or he has to win games with all the other decks that, the crazy decks that he's brought. Yeah, so he, he has a Hunter with um, Volcanic Drake, and then he has a um, Warrior with Volcanic Drake. And I would say Warrior is fine versus Mech Mage, especially his version as well, with Double Revenge. Uh, I would say it's uh, actually like 55% at least versus Dark Mech Mage. And then Hunter... Well, what's the specific about his hunter? He has a volcanic drake. He has um, unleash the hunt. Like other than that, is a normal hunter, right? So yeah, we we keep piping up the volcanic drakes, but to be honest, it's just one card. It's almost like he's running cult master in um in his hunter, right? Because it's kind of just one card that you kind of combo with the unleash the hounds. Yeah. All right, this is game number four. Forsen versus Tides of Time. Forsen just needs one more win, and Tides of Time is back. He's eating a lot, actually. OP, yep. OP, boys. Yeah, when uh, whenever you see Tides of Time uh, playing tournaments, you actually always see him eating. Just kind of a trend that I've noticed. Uh, nourishing yourself is really important. Yeah, especially since he's like bringing he's. He's eating very healthy food. We saw an apple, even. Yeah, a sandwich before. Tides of apples. And uh, he has a pretty good hand versus um, Mech Mage. He has the fireworks, shield slump, Senjin, execute. All the cards really good. Yeah, but uh, at least for now, he probably wants to play on curve. Harrison Jones will probably be a blank. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen Blinktron. Exactly. It was, it was only um, Hyped who was running Blinktron in his uh, mage deck, so definitely not too much value that Forsen, will, or rather that Tide's Time will be able to get from this Harrison Jones. Spider tank, yep. Pretty uh, pretty obvious play here, just going for the good curve and not running the snow chugger directly into... Um, into the weapon. Into th exactly. Like, he's kind of sad that this uh, spider tank will die, but at least he has a... Uh, but he has at least has a snow chugger to follow that up with. Yeah, that's true. Um, is a neutron a better play uh, if there is a death spite? If you play a neutron now, you follow up with uh, Tinker Town Technician next turn. Um, besides death spite, 
what does what does Forsen have to worry about? The only other big turn four play is Sanjin Shieldmaster, I guess. Um, the thing is that if you go for the Snow Chugger, it can die to just one hit. Like a weapon, maybe a armor up, shield slam, and it's going to get denied. And we've seen those snow chargers being even executed by warrior players. And with a Neutron, you give yourself a chance to play that technician as a 4 4 and get some value. And we see that there is a fireworks uh, for Tides of Time. Yeah, so this, um, like, Tides of Time will be curving out very well here. Senjin into, uh, into Belcher. Sludge Belcher, even. And it's like a very conscious choice for Tides of Time to bring Sludge Belcher to this tournament instead of the very obvious pilot of Shredders. And I think it's because he knows his deck is very greedy with uh, the Volcanic Drakes, with so many dragons, and with the Blackwing Corruptors that he needs to be a little bit more defensive. It's actually amazing how stable his draws are with this deck, with you know so many dragons and cards like uh, Corruptors, as you mentioned. I didn't see um, any bad draws from time to time. Mostly he just gets in, in, a, in the right order. Wow, and he gets a dragon now to power that Corruptor. But what's the what's the play here? Um, just playing Corruptor to kill that. Well, he can kill the Snow Chugger, I believe. Maybe attack into the Noyatron. Yeah, I mean, playing a Philomental does seem pretty good here. Um, it both develops the board. And uh, wow, I did not expect this, to be honest. This protects this uh, the Sludge Belcher. It's pretty nice. Yeah, makes sense. It kind of preemptively protects the Sludge Belcher as well. Because you can still Shield Slam it afterwards, or that Tinker Town Technician. But, uh... It, it'll, the, afterwards, the Tinker Town Technician will still have uh, dealt its damage. Plus, like, the Snow Chugger, usually you're worried about that because it blocks out weapons. But with the... With the Sludge Belcher, you're not as worried, I guess. Yeah, it's still doing its work. Like, even if it's, uh, if it stays alive, it's frozen, it's still taunt, it's still fine. And uh, also it forces Forsen to ping it if he wants to, to kill it. So it locks two, two points of mana, forcing him into only using four. Saying that Forsen is being forced to do stuff is so awkward. Yeah. Kind of a tongue twister there. Uh, yeah, none of Forsen plays seem very good here. And it's actually going to be him that seems to be just delaying... Um, delaying, like, it's it kind of like he's like the control player even, just delaying for that Dr. Boom turn. This is, Emergency uh, coolants on the Corruptor is cool. Yeah, it'll save his Lothab at least. Which means maybe he'll get some extra damage in. It, it means he'll at least be able to punch through that Sludge Belcher, which is really annoying before. Alright, so there is a Fireworks, and uh, I like killing the 1 2 and uh, just uh, killing the Snow Chugger with, with Belcher. Because as we mentioned, Belcher is, is alright when it's frozen. It's still dealing 3 points of damage. Yeah, I don't think... Um, yeah, this... The health of the... Or rather, this Sludge Belcher being frozen doesn't really matter too much. You can kind of treat it like a taunted up Ancient Watcher here. It's just going to... Um, wow. That missed. Well, did it really? I think that was still okay. Because at least it what did 1 damage to the Sludge Belcher. And he... Um, Forsen was allowed to ping it. What do you think about this play instead of playing Dr. Boom on 7? Um, I mean, uh, we all joke about playing Dr. Boom on 7, but to be honest, like the Goblin Blast Mage is almost as imbalanced as the Dr. Boom. And the problem with playing Dr. Boom on 7 is that there's so many 5 attack minions on board that it might have been like quite easy for Tides of Time to deal with it at that, at that turn. Well, right now, Dr. Boom seems uh, decent on turn 8, but then Tides of Time has that brawl. Not really a way to stop Acolyte of Pain from drawing cards. Oh, wow, execute. So, with this, a brawl, and then um, maybe attack with Acolyte of Pain into Dr. Boom now, and then brawl. If Dr. Boom survives, you execute it. If anything else survives, you just kill it with the fireworks. Yeah, exactly. So he can like, kind of like hedge his plays here, or have... I think it's just the, overall the safer option is to attack into Dr. Boom. Um, okay. I think that's fine as well, because you can still uh, take 7 damage to face if you want. Well, now it's uh, a bit more dangerous if you take 4. Yeah, uh, justifying this play, I'd say, like, even... Like, let's say he brawls here, 
um, the bombs will still do damage to face, and with this play, the bombs have less of a chance to uh, deal damage to his face. Like, they have more of a chance to kill the Acolyte of Pain, for example. Yeah. And I'll draw him more cards. He's even he's considering an Nefarian. So Dr. Boom and a bomb uh, represent 10 points of damage, but Nefarian needs to be answered, and it's not like Freeze Ma uh, Mech Mage is running uh, BGH. So two Mage cards, Counter Spell and Ice Block. Okay, Ice Block is pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, it is. Counter Spell not as good because just of the variety spare of spare parts. parts that Forcing can get. You know, you're saying that now, but then uh, after some time, the spare parts will be out, and uh, there might be Antonidas with, let's say, one of those spare parts, or a Frostbolt, and he will be able to counter that. Okay, so Forcing can actually trade into the Nefarian if he wants, but ju just judging from what he's done in previous turns, or, I, I would actually expect a Frostbolt on this Nefarian. Yeah, I'm trying to get the damage done. Okay, so Forcing's going all in. So finally, we are going to see Tides of Brawl. And what is going to survive, Monk? Is it Nefarian? Is it Dr. Boom? It's actually the bomb. Oh, Mr. Stepan is not good, unfortunately. And this game has just turned all the way around. Tides of Time has, at least for the moment, he's stabilized. And not only is he stabilized, but he has the option to, uh, if he's like really feeling threatened, he can even play an Ice Block here. The thing with Ice Block is, if you're playing as a warrior, you can Ice Block up and then just keep armoring up. So when your opponent procs your Ice Block, like even if it's at 1 HP, you can just armor back up to like three or 1 HP and 2 armor immediately, even if you don't have a Shield Block or Shield Maiden. Yeah, that's true. And here Tides of Time is thinking what to kill. Uh, with the bomb, there is always a risk that the bomb will kill. Um, well, just deal 4 damage. If it deals 4 damage to Craptor, it dies. If it deals... For damage to face, then uh, it's it's really bad for for tides. So he goes for mistress. Yeah, uh, he's treating this bomb as kind of a leper gnome at the moment because he's saying, if I don't attack this bomb, then he'll either have to trade in to my blackwing corruptor to get the four extra damage, or he'll have to attack my face to get two damage. By the way, fireball was lethal. Is there a way to lethal now from the bomb? If bomb hits uh, face for four, that's six. Not really. Not yet. Um, even if you ping your bomb, that's still not enough damage. Okay, Tides of Time needs something. He needs an armor up every turn. So what do you do here? C can you deal with this board somehow? You might want to attack with a weapon into the... Um... Oh man, this is so awkward. You have to deny max, right? Like, there are only two cards in hand. You know, there is a one spare part. You want to deny max, so I think you might have to attack into the bomb first with a 5 4. Maybe or... this is. Maybe this is a turn where you just use both your secrets. And armor up. Can you use only one secret? Like, maybe only use Ice Block, armor up, and play something? It's not really. There's not really something you can play. If you go for Death Spite, like let's say Death Spite, attack face. Uh, if you attack the bomb, you take two. You're not going to die uh, if the bomb hits something else. All right, he's going for the bomb. He's taking the risk. If this bomb hits face for anything else, oh, three great. damage to face. That's it. That's four points of damage. And well, he played counter spell in, instead of ice block. Yeah, what a great play actually, because he knows like one of the cards is a secret. Oh my like god! Dead. Exactly. He force it needed to draw a minion, and that was it. I guess a spell would have helped too. Yeah, either a spell or a minion would have helped because of the time rewinder. If he would play an ice block, then he had a chance, right? But uh, that's it, and force is going to take the series and the tournament and the trophy and his first tournament victory, I believe. Winning versus Tides of Time, well played by both players, and I really enjoyed this final. Oh man, just Murlocs, Dragons, Forsens, crazy. Yeah, Forsens, the first tournament 
tor first tournament win, and I'm certain he's going to be really happy. Just an overall great experience so far uh, from the HTC Invitational. Tides of Time was able to make it to the finals, but unfortunately, his decks just fell a tiny bit short. All right, so we have our first winner of uh, HTC Invitational. That is Forsen. You can see here what was the way. So Forsen won versus Team Liquid Naria. Then he defeated Colento, hyped, and Tides of Time. So many great players, such a long way with all those decks with the Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, and Demon Lock, or Zemon Lock, kind of like a zoo. So, um, Monk, overall, closing thoughts from you. Did you enjoy it? What happened? F favorite uh, moment of the tournament? Uh, my favorite moment of the tournament was probably the draw that we saw from Stripe Crow versus Trump. One of the first draws we've ever seen in Hearthstone. It was certainly an exciting one with the Sarah Awakens, and it just was an, an interesting scenario, at least. I, I certainly agree. And uh, guys, I want to um, just c confirm that uh, the fact that our production manager disappeared, he got burgled, and uh, he actually had a burglar in his house. It's not yeah. a joke. He yeah, didn't pass uh, away. Yeah, just really unfortunate. We give our thanks out to our production team. Yeah, uh, so a big shout out to our production team. We were able to come back. Um, nothing happened, uh, hopefully. Like, he is still alive and uh, he stopped the, the burglary. So he was able to return. Everything's fine there. And uh, yeah, overall, I enjoyed the tournament very much. It was amazing two days. We have our champion. A big shout out to HTC for sponsoring us. And a big shout out to Trump for uh, having us here on his channel, on his own channel. So, uh, Mong, any cl closing thoughts from you? Yeah, I enjoyed casting with you, Nimsh, as always. Um, I enjoyed this great HCC tournament. So many uh, great games, um, especially from the players that brought the interesting decks, especially from Trump on his own channel, bringing us the draw. Just a um, great, great weekend overall, Nimsh. Yeah, I certainly agree. Um, so again, shout out to like big teams that uh, were involved as well, TSM, Cloud9, Team Liquid, and other all our players. And shout out to you viewers for watching and having fun and um, supporting all of us. So from me and from Monk, thank you so much and have a good night.